The UK bar exam or the bar training course is easily one of the hardest exams to pass. The exam itself comprises of 12 separate exams and what makes it difficult is not just the content itself but it's the sheer volume of information that you're expected to absorb and retain it in like eight months. So I've put together a blueprint which enabled me to rank first on the exam and across four episodes I'm going to walk you through my step-by-step -step process so that you can do it too. Guys, it's nice to have you back on the channel. If you're new here, my name's Taz and I'm a barrister based in the UK. And on this channel, we overcome the challenges facing law students and explore the nature of our minds through materials, supplements, and practices to create happy, healthy, and optimized mental wellbeing. This will be a four part episode, like I've said. So part one is gonna be the centralized exams, part two, advocacy, part three is gonna be redoc and conferencing, and the final part is gonna be legal writing, which includes drafting and opinion writing. To celebrate the launch of my new website, what I've done is I've put together a bar training course pack. Now this pack includes all the documents I'm going to refer to across these four videos. More importantly includes everything I use to prepare for the exam from my revision notes to flow diagrams to past papers and so much more is in there. So go and check it out and let me know what you think. I'm also launching my new newsletter which is called The Courtyard and this is a community mailing list where I'm sharing exclusive content, my ideas and loads of different things. So if you're not on it or already jump onto my site and you can subscribe there. One final thing to mention, I'll be uploading book summaries on the website from the most influential books that I've read. Some quick definitions before we begin. MCQs, multiple choice questions, SAQs, single answer questions, and SGSs, which are small group sessions, effectively they're seminars. I want to start by outlining 10 golden rules. So number one, it's a marathon, not a race. And why I say that is because you need to pace yourself, otherwise you'll burn out. Number two is focus on yourself. Don't worry about where X or Y, where they're up to on the course because, because there's so many different modules, people are investing time in different places. So if you're judging off someone else, before you know it, you're stressing yourself out for no reason and you could be further ahead than them in one module and vice versa. Number three, don't major in the minors. What do I mean by that is because there's so much detail on the exam, it's more important to ensure you have a clear fundamental understanding of the big picture stuff for every module and then you layer in the detail, not vice versa. You don't worry about making sure you've got all the detail right and you're forgetting the big picture stuff. Number four is there's too much material and too little time. So no matter how much time you have, it will never be enough to know everything. Number five, play to your strengths. Everyone's got different strengths. What are yours? Is it retention? Is it memorizing stuff? Is it advocacy? Is it application? Whatever they are, know what those modules are and make sure you absolutely smash them. Number six is pull on all your strings. This means exhaust all your resources, use all the online material, contact all friends who've already done the course, speak to your lecturers after class, whatever you have to do, do it to get the grades you need. Number seven, sounds simple, but people do do it and that is don't miss seminars. They're so important. There's so much information on the course that what trumps information is application and you do the application in the seminars so you can't afford to miss them. I've already spoken about number eight in my previous video, which is the keys to success on the bar training course. And this is that consolidation, it's a myth. Don't worry about it. Don't be stressed out about it when your teachers are saying, make sure you consolidate. No one's doing it, don't worry. Number nine, practice, 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 especially for advocacy and legal writing. Finally, look after yourself. It's a grueling eight months and you need to be winding down in a way that is not making you more tired for the days to come. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes, starting off with civil and criminal litigation. I'm gonna group them together because the structure in preparing for the exam is very similar. For these exams, we're gonna start off by looking at studying, then exam preparation and ending on exam technique. For civil and crime, I recommend three folders each. A small one for your flow diagrams, and then here, for example, you've got two meaty ones which you're gonna need for the syllabus. And how I would organize these is start with your SGS notes and then the questions you're asked in the SGS and the MCQs you were given. After that, the answers to the MCQs, then your mock exam, and then ending with a one page summary for each SGS, which essentially covers the core concepts of what you were taught and any 
key information all on one page, no bigger than one page, otherwise it starts getting out of control. Don't worry if the folders get a little bit messy to begin with, it's to be expected. If you're up north, you're flying down south all the time for qualifying dinners, you're doing a bit of mooting probably, a bit of this, a bit of that, before you know it, it's just all over the show. So the important thing is you stay on top of it so that when you arrive to begin the exam revision, everything is neat and tidy, ready to go. In terms of the books that I used for civil, I referred to this previously, which is prepare to pass civil litigation. I didn't even bother using the white book after the first week. It was massive, it was very heavy, and this just nicely and neatly outlines the entire civil litigation process in a really easy to follow way, and includes all the syllabus. I am aware that there isn't an edition for this year, but what I will say on that point is get the book, great for your understanding and cross-reference it with the current syllabus. Criminal, again, didn't really touch Blackstones. It came down to Rory Clark, which gives a nice summary of the uh, criminal litigation process. But the main book I used was the BPP Criminal Litigation Training Manual. This is an exceptional book with loads of nice diagrams in there to make sure your understanding is as thorough as it can be. I don't want to throw the white book or Blackstones completely under the bus. God, they're heavy, I've not, <laughs> I've not held them in years. But what I'll say is this, I use them at the end. So the books that I used to revise gave me 80% of the material and I use those simply as safety nets to ensure that I wasn't missing anything. The books themselves are great for contextualizing the law because they show you how it came to be and how it works in practice. So they are useful, but they can't be the primary source of information. And that's because there's just too much fluff. You need it as lean as possible for the exam so that you can retain it. And there's too much fluff in there. Something to keep in mind is that the books probably won't match the SGSs or the way in which your institution teaches the syllabus, but that's okay. You go to the SGS and you just find what's the relevant chapter in the book. And at the very end, me, for example, I reorganized all my civil chapters to match the preparing to pass book. And for crime, I basically got all the chapters to follow the process of the trial. After you know what book you want to use, you want to print off the BSB syllabus for crime and civil, whichever book you're using. As I've said, make sure it's cross-referenced to ensure that you are not missing any of the syllabus in your preparation. Be aware as well that the BSB update the syllabus while you're on the course. So there might be little bits, pieces that come in throughout the year, just make sure you keep adding that in. Now, once you've read through the syllabus, pick up a past paper for civil and for crime without the mark scheme and just read it. And the reason I recommend this, it comes from the art of war, is that you need to know your enemy. You need to know what arena these exams are going to be played out in and once you begin to understand the landscape this will influence the way that you revise before you start studying implement the traffic light highlighting system which is red is you need to highlight that in red because it's a priority yellow is important and green is ideal it would be nice to know it you need a way to differentiate the content because there's so much information coloring is one way of doing that but if you don't differentiate the content you don't you can't distinguish what's so important what's not and you're just trying to learn everything and like i said there's too much information to memorize every single thing you need to know so the traffic light system is a good way of absorbing and retaining that content. Another way of differentiating or distinguishing the content outside of coloring is flow diagrams. It's visual, it's different than just text. Really benefited me doing this. So what I would recommend, you can't flow diagram everything, but anything that has a nice bit of structure to it or which is screaming flow diagram, do a flow diagram for it and just keep adding it to your SGS notes as you go. For example, this flow diagram for civil helped me map out how the whole process worked and it was so good that I just ended up sticking it on the very front of my civil litigation folder just so I was looking at it every morning to ensure that it was ingrained up here. Make sure, and I said this in the beginning, don't miss the SGSs because a huge component of the exam preparation is the questions that you do in those SGSs. There is no, there's no good enough reason to miss it. I was in London and I spent 160 pounds to get a single back from London to Manchester to be at that seminar, so you have no excuse. Next, make a log. This was so helpful to me. And where is it? Here it is. This log contains basically three sections. The first section is concepts that you struggle with in civil and crime. The second section is a CPR or, or criminal procedure rules that you just haven't covered or is not in that folder. And then the final section is identifying 
what questions that you got wrong and just making a note of them. Why? Because you're going to come back to this. Time on the course is of the essence and every minute matters. So having an exam timetable will make such a big difference in how you execute your days and what you're getting done, that accountability element. I personally don't recommend doing it at the beginning because the course is so up and down, it's just pointless. However, once you're towards the end of the SGSs, it's really worth having that in place. An example I'll leave for you up here, how I did it was I split the days into two and every day I was either doing ethics and civil, criminal and civil, ethics and crime, whatever it was, I was knocking off two subjects every day. Before you deep dive into your revision and allocate how much time you're gonna to give to what, I would hold off and wait for the BSB to release the assessment guide for the civil litigation and criminal litigation exams. And what this document essentially does is, it's a document from the BSB saying, this is how many questions might come up on this area of the syllabus for all the different areas. And although it's not a guarantee, it's a very good way, a tactical way, to allocate your time to seize maximum marks. Once I had the assessment guide for each, I organized the chapters for civil and criminal litigation in accordance to high, medium, and low priority based on the number of questions I was likely to be asked, and that's how I distributed my time. The final thing to do, now that you've got all this information, go back to your log and fill in the areas of the syllabus that you've missed. If you're short for time, make sure at the very least you fill in the areas for the big markers. By this point, you should have a nice comprehensive set of notes that marry up to the syllabus and you're ready to begin exam preparation. For exam preparation, normally you'll be around eight weeks out, maybe a bit shorter, maybe a bit more. Whatever it is, the important point is this. Don't spend any more time making nice flowery notes because it's a waste of time. You need to be jumping into questions at this point and using the mistakes or the ones that you get wrong in those questions to fill in the gaps in your knowledge. My process starts and it has to begin with the notes themselves, go through them at least once, paying very close attention to the traffic light system. After the notes, do the seminar questions you were given and then mark them. Do the MCQs you were given, mark them, mock, mark them. And all the ones that you got wrong, add them to your log. And basically the final two steps is reread all the one page summaries that you've done for every SGS to ensure all of that knowledge is at the forefront of your mind and then end by going through the log of all the questions that you got wrong. And believe me, at that point, you're ready to go. Let's end on some nice exam technique. Number one is distinguish between may and must. What is the question asking? You need to be super vigilant to that. Number two is for all the MCQs, I adopted the elimination method, which is you're being asked four questions, eliminate the two, which you just know straight off the bat, it's obviously not them. Then you're left with two answers to choose between. And if you don't know, worst case scenario, you've got a 50-50 chance. Let's get into ethics. So the first thing in terms of studying, the first thing you should do, grab the 10 core duties that you've been given and you need to absolutely put them in here, memorize them verbatim. With respect to folders for ethics, I recommend two. One is your BSB handbook reference folder with your core duties nicely printed on the front so you're seeing them every day. And the other one is uh, the bank of all the SAQs that you're gonna be asked over the course of all your SGSs so you can go back to them. Go and print off the syllabus and grab the BSB handbook and remove anything that's not relevant. Once you've taken everything out, slot in all the additional guidance and then ancillary to the BSB handbook, I would use the BSB handbook as a reference guide, you have to get your hands on the MMU Professional Ethics Guide. This is just incredible. I've already referred to this document once. It maps out the ethical duties, the rules and guidance in such a clean and neat way that you can't not have this document. With ethics, something really important to understand is that you need to have a clear skeleton in your mind of how the handbook is put together. Certain core duties are engaged at certain parts of the handbook. So when you're being given a question, 
your mind needs to be able to see the different areas of the handbook to understand what core duties are engaged. And then once you know what core duties are engaged, then you begin to layer your understanding with the rules and then after the rules, the guidance. Go to all your SGSs. If you have to miss them for whatever reason, make sure for civil crime ethics, speak to a friend and get the answers to the questions that you've missed filled in. And like with civil and crime, ensure with ethics that you have a log and you're making a note of every single question that you get wrong. If your institution offers podcasts, listen to them. Ethics is trying to prepare you for ethical dilemmas you might face in practice. So if there are any podcasts you can listen to, just getting your mind thinking in that space is really helpful. The ethics exam comes down to two things, scenario experience and having a method to deal with the question. In terms of scenario experience, honestly, I've included an absolute ton of questions and answers in my bar course pack. For the method, I'm going to defer to preparing to pass professional ethics. Now, although I didn't really gel with this book, I thought it was really overcomplicated, I did like the method that they used uh, to answer questions, which is the idea method. How this works is the idea method applies to every issue in a question and every question can have multiple issues. So let's start with the I. Identify the issue. What is the problem? What is the ethical dilemma? What's the issue that's being disclosed in the question? D is for describe the relevant parts of the syllabus which apply. So you need to describe the core duty which kicks in, which rule kicks in, and which guidance. For this, super important, when you're looking at the mark scheme, when you're answering a question, absorb the keywords that they use and regurgitate them in the exam. E is for explain how those rules or guidance actually are relevant and how they apply to this scenario. So it's the application of the rules. Finally, A is for advise. Don't forget to not only answer the question, but to actually advise the client. So if you follow this method properly for every question, for every issue you see, it's identify the issue, describe what the relevant parts of the syllabus are, explain how they apply, and then advise. And you do that for every issue in a question. After you've completed all the SGSs, add in ethics to your exam timetable to begin to prepare for your exams. My process was read the actual reference BSB handbook at least once with all the relevant guidance before I swapped over to the professional ethics manual from MMU. It's a lot better because like I've said, it's leaner. If it's leaner, it's easier to retain. After that, I went through all the SGS questions mark them, went on to do the mock, marked it, and then all the questions I got wrong, I added them to the log. And the final thing I did, as you can expect, is go through the log one final time before that big day comes. For exam technique, the most important thing in the ethics exam is to have a plan. And what I personally would recommend, every question you get, every issue you see in there, the acronym idea coming off it with a one word for each, just so that you know where you're going. You don't want to go in blind and be all over the show. Number two, keyword dump. Honestly, just throw in as many keywords as you can. Hopefully some of them stick and you just scrape up some marks. And finally, remember, time's ticking. Pay attention, don't just get lost in the exam. Otherwise, before you know it, it's over and you're done. One final word from me, you're never ready for the centralized exams. There's not enough time for you to be ready. So make the most of the time given to you. Go in, do your best and get out of there. Other than that, guys, you know what it is. I'll see you at the next one. Mm -hmm.